Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Xterra World Cup recap. We're here to bring you all of the race action from the inaugural season, see how the World Cup series developed and who eventually came out on top. The 2023 Xterra World Cup spans three continents, seven locations and 12 action-packed races, as the best in off-road triathlon go head-to-head -head for their share of $340,000 of prize money. The series kicked off in Taiwan before heading to the US and Oak Mountain and then on to Europe for events in Belgium, the Czech Republic and Germany. Back to America for Beaver Creek before the big finale in Europe, held alongside the Xterra World Championship in Molvino, Italy. The second half of the Xterra World Cup kicked off with the sixth and seventh races in the Czech Republic and the bohemian town of Prakatice. I'm not here for just have some fun and with my beginning of the season I'm here to be competitive on each races I will take part of so I will definitely try to be on my best on each races no party no <laughs> things like that no beer no alcohol nothing just uh, try to have a good sleep uh, between each races and be on my top up first on Saturday was the full distance event and in the men's race Jens Roth pulled away early with the fastest swim split in 18 minutes and 33 seconds. Michele Bonaccino was 30 seconds back, followed closely by Keller Norland and Jules Dumas but ultimately none of these men would crack the top 10 at the finish line. Yeah, now it's the halfway of the World Cup and uh, now it's important to be consistent. You don't just need to go flat out for one race, you need to think for the overall and uh, yeah, already get uh, bad luck in the first round, no. so now I want to be sure to be at the finish line and be strong at every stage. At about the 10 km mark on the bike, Felix Frissier was leading with Maxine Chanet and home country favourite Lucas Kochar right behind. But in the next big uphill he kicked it into another gear and started riding away with the race lead. Felix Frissier would post the fastest bike split of the day with a 1 hour 46 minute and 39 second split that was more than 2 minutes faster than Chanet, 3 minutes quicker than Kochar and Serriers and 4 minutes faster than the mountain bike specialists Ruben Rizafa and Jensemil Sloth Nielsen. By the time he reached the bike to run transition, Frissier had a 1 minute lead on Chanet with V and Kochar together 2 minutes back. With the speediest runner on tour, Arthur Serriers would indeed cut into Ferissier's lead, but not by enough, as Felix would take the tape in 2 hours, 36 minutes and 21 seconds, in front of a huge crowd, lined along the cobbled streets in the medieval town square. Serriers would run past V, Kochar and Chenet to finish in second place, after a typically fast run to carve through the field. The local hero, Lucas Kochar, would win the battle for third place, landing him on the podium in the full distance race here in the Czech Republic. In the women's race, Emma de Croix would set the pace in the swim with the fastest split of the day in 20 minutes and 46 seconds, followed by Marta Mendito in 21.32, and local favourite Anita Grabmuller and Sandra Meyerhofer in together 20 seconds back. Onto the bike, Meyerhofer took to the front early, but apparently hit a hole at high speed and went down hard, opening up a huge cut on her face and suffering gravel rash to almost her entire side of her body. I got some stitches on the knee on the back and yeah, I, I finished the race but not in the best way. And so I have to uh, stop for a while, uh, recover, focus on recovery and uh, be back strong for Molveno. Mayor Hoffer would stay in the race and would ultimately would finish fourth to collect some valuable points, but Bill Wan took the lead on the bike after this crash and never looked back. Solen Bill Wan had close to a three minute lead on Patiers at the bike to run transition would add to that lead further on the run to cross the finish line in an uncontested win of 3 hours, 2 minutes and 2 seconds. Patiers was strong all day to finish in second place and would retain her top spot in the Xterra World Cup standings. Luan Duvasson, who won the Xterra European Championships in June, would finish by herself in third place. Sandra Mehrhofer courageously carried on after her crash to finish in fourth position, but would not start the short track the following day. Are 
Xterra Czech hosted the third of five Xterra short track races. It combined a two lap 400 meter swim with a four lap 7.6 kilometer mountain bike and a two lap four kilometer trail run. In the women's race, Emma de Kruh was first out of the water in 5 minutes 30 seconds with Aneta Grubmula, Elise Patiers, Beatrix Ferreira, Solène Bilwan and Marta Mendito all close together around 20 seconds back. Bilwan would reel in de Croix on the first climb to take the lead and never look back, gradually extending the gap to have plenty of time to give high fives to a huge crowd of spectators lining the finish line before taking the tape for a second time in as many days. The battle for second was close, with Luan Duvasson, the 2022 Xterra Short Track Series champion, managing to pass Mendito on the fourth lap of the bike to move into second place. Mendito would hold on to the third, Ferreira with a great race to finish fourth, and Emma de Croix rewarded with fifth place. In the men's race, Jens Roth was first out of the water, followed closely by Michele Bonacina, Federico Spinazzi and Keller Norland. Serriers was the ninth man out of the swim-to-bike transition and would start working his way towards the front. Bonacina led through the first two laps before seven-time world champion Ruben Ruzafa would move past. Ruzafa was first off of the bike, followed closely by yesterday's full-distance winner Felix Frisia. Jens Emil Sloth Nielsen was 19th out of the water, but would take the lead at the first lap of the run with Ferissier on his heels and Serriers in hot pursuit. Around midway through the second lap, Arthur Serriers pranced into the lead and crossed the finish line 11 seconds ahead of Ferissier. Sloth Nielsen would finish 11 seconds later in third place, with Ruzafa just six seconds later in fourth, as the top four were separated by less than 30 seconds. Elise Patiers and Jens Emil Sloth Nielsen will wear the golden caps and don the Lisa's jersey once more when the Xterra World Cup rolls into Germany next week. The town of Zittau, Germany, would play host to the next round of the World Cup with another double header. First up is the short track on Friday and a course made up of a two lap 400 meter swim, a four loop six kilometer mountain bike and a two lap 2.6 kilometer trail run. In the women's race, Emma de Croix was once again first out of the water in five minutes, 46 seconds, followed by Maria Calgella. Solène Bilwan and Elise Patiers would be 12 seconds back. Once onto the bike, the rain and the wind made an already technical mountain bike course even tougher for competitors. Patiers and Bill Wan would take to the front and were locked in a tight battle until the last lap of the bike when Bill Wan took a hard spill, giving the lead to Patiers as she crashed in a rock garden. Patiers would indeed hold the gap through to the finish line by posting the fastest bike and run splits of the day, crossing 30 seconds ahead of a wounded Bilwan in second place. Marta Mendito was solid in third, with Luanda Wasson finishing fourth and Helena Karaskova Urbanova in fifth. In the men's race, home favourite Jens Roth would lead out of the water with Michele Bonacina close behind. Jules Dumas and Eric Lagerstrom would be just behind them. Once onto the bike, Bonacina and Lagerstrom would take to the front early, joined quickly by Lucas Kochar, who would actually take the lead. By the fourth lap, Jens Emil Sloth Nielsen and Ruben Rezafa would hit the front of the race, now setting the pace with Arthur Serriers in tow. Sloth Nielsen, the current Xterra World Cup points leader, would post the fastest bike split of the day, overtaking no less than 14 riders in the process and was the first to hit the run course. However, Arthur Serriers was right behind. Sloth Nielsen would do everything he could, but at the end of the day, Arthur Serriers was the fastest runner. He would stride past Sloth Nielsen towards the end of the first lap and would manage the gap through to the finish line to take the tape with eight seconds to spare. 
It's his second short track win in six days, and with today's victory, he would max out his Xterra World Cup scoring potential in short track races, with a total of three wins and a full complement of 60 points. Felix Frissier came into the bike to run transition in fifth place, following posting the fastest run split and would move past Kotcha and Rizafa to finish in third. Lucas Kotcha would finish fourth and Rizafa in fifth. The next day, the Xterra World Cup continued into the full distance of Xterra Germany. I don't know much at all about the competition, to be honest. Uh, I would be really, really happy if it was not just me all by myself getting out of the water, just given the way that the first 10K of the bike is. Um, but I don't know, I'm also, I'm totally comfortable leading or sitting on someone's feet if, if that's how it plays out. A big push in the swim from Jens Roth, not keen to share the fastest swim with anyone, saw only American Eric Lagerstrom able to hang onto the German's feet. Behind in a big group, a patient Michele Bonaccina took a risk to stay with the main chase group, and at the halfway point the pack featured all of the big favourites. Arthur Serriers, Felix Frissier, Max Chane, Lucas Kochar and Jules Dumas, all were content to ride the feet of the Italian. Jens Roth would post the fastest swim in 20 minutes and 10 seconds with Lagerstrom right behind as the pair would take a 30 second lead into the swim to bike transition. Onto the bike, a powerful front group formed on the flat and fast opening 10 kilometers on approach to the biggest climb on this epic bike course. Serriers would lead at the base with Kochar, V, Forestier and Bonaccina in close formation as this elite group peeled themselves off the front of the race. Lagerstrom was 50 seconds back and doing his best to hold off a charging Ruben Rizafa, who was on a mission towards the front of the race after a bad swim. Indeed, the Spaniard was all in, catching the front group before the top of the climb and then attacking like a man with nothing to fear on the descent. He would create a gap before being undone by a flat tire and a broken wheel, resulting in a DNF and the indication of just how hard he was pushing. Cresting the top alone was World Cup leader Jens Sloth Nielsen, who was two minutes behind this group and pushing hard, making progress with a mammoth task ahead of him when chasing this world-class group solo. Taking advantage of the chaos, Ferissier attacked, forcing Serriers to follow, and the two would carve out a lead during the rest of the bike leg, entering the bike to run transition with a one minute, 30 second lead on Bonaccino. Sloth Nielsen would enter T2 in 4th place, but nearly 3 minutes adrift from the lead, meaning the Xterra World Cup leader would have to do the impossible to hold on to the golden jersey. From then on in, it was the showdown we've all been waiting for, as the two Frenchmen, Ferissier and Serriers, went to war over the 10km trail run. They battled the entire way into the last 500 meters, where Serriers would just have enough to edge the victory by a mere 7 seconds thanks to a race best split of 39 minutes and 30 seconds. Sloth Nilsson would run past Bonaccina for this final spot on the podium, however the Dane is still missing that elusive victory in the World Cup. Bonaccina held on to fourth, a fantastic race for the Italian, followed by Lagerstrom in fifth. The American having a great day in Germany, in only his second ever Xterra race of the year. In the women's race, Emma de Croix would take nearly a minute's lead into T1 after a solo effort race best swim of 23 minutes and 24 seconds. Behind her, the World Cup superstars were all content to look at each other, forming a powerful front group containing Marta Mendito, Elise Patiers, Solen Buwan, Beatrix Ferreira, all hitting the first transition together. Not content to wait around, Patiers put a foot on the gas. After displaying some magic legs in yesterday's short track, the French woman would put on a masterclass during the mountain bike. Pushing some big watts and wasting none of the effort on the technical sections, Patiers built a huge buffer to enter transition with a 4 minute and 20 second lead. 
Bill One reached T2 in second with Duvasan close behind, the Swiss woman having worked hard to make her way forward and towards the front of the race throughout the bike leg. She would catch Bill One towards the flatter sections at the back end of the course. Patiers would still have plenty of time to enjoy the finish line, soaking up the applause as she completed her first perfect weekend. Luan Duvasson posted the fastest run split of the day in 48 minutes and 18 seconds to move clear of Bill Wan and take the runner-up spot on the podium. For Bill Wan, the reigning Xterra world champion, who swept Xterra Czech full distance and short track races last weekend, this podium finish was hard earned. Marta Mendito finished in fourth and veteran Xterra athlete Helena Karaskova Obanova rounded out the top five. The Xterra World Cup men's leaderboard has a new number one for the first time since Oak Mountain back in May, as Arthur Serriers takes the lead with his win here in Germany. Felix Frissier also advances, moving into the second spot, with Jens Milsloth Nielsen dropping into third. Michaela Bonacina jumps four slots into fourth place, with Lucas Kochar moving up into fifth. In the women's standings, there was no change in order, but the point spread got closer as Duvasan and Bill Wan both improved their totals. Definitely one of the toughest races I ever had, thanks to Felix, because the victory is always beautiful when you have a, a great opponent like this. Not to be pretentious, but I definitely think we, we are the two best cross three athletes at this moment. For sure, shape can change. Uh, and until Molveno, but <clears throat> right now, together, it was, I know what I'm talking about, it was a really high level sports and thanks to the organization, thanks to everything. Beaver Creek and the Rocky Mountains would play host to the penultimate round of the Xterra World Cup, with a mixture of athletes all seeking some important points before the end of the season. Coming into Xterra, Beaver Creek is a really good opportunity for me to gain some points. Being on my home continent and in my backyard gives me an advantage to take some points and move up in the world standings because I need those points. You know, I'm trying to keep the pressure off of myself, but in reality, I do need those points in order to move up into the top five or top three. In the men's race, Sam Osborne would lead Americans Timothy O'Donnell and Keller Norlin out of the water in 17 minutes and 8 seconds, the trio taking a full minute and 20 seconds lead ahead of Ruben Ruzaffa, Brandon Rikita and Sullivan Midar. Ruzaffa and Midar would roll wheel to wheel for the next 15 miles, with Ruzaffa the seven-time world champion riding at the front. The Spaniard would throw everything at the young American in an attempt to dislodge him from the wheel, but nothing would stick. The two would fly into the bike to run transition together and the foot race was on. Solomon Midar pulled 30 seconds ahead in the first mile and would keep extending the gap from there. Midar would manage to defend his USA Championship from last year, a title his dad had held 15 years previously. And for him to do this in front of his family and friends and against some of the World Cup's best must feel like a dream come true. Midar would have post the fastest bike and run splits to take the tape in 2 hours, 15 minutes and 33 seconds, with Ruzaffa in 2nd and Sam Osborne in 3rd. With this win, Midar would advance 4 places and enter the top 10 of the Xterra World Cup standings. Ruzaffa would move into 4th place overall, following his DNF in Germany, his last minute plane ticket to Beaver Creek paying off. Kira McPherson would jump into 5th and Sebastian Caraban would move from 8th place into 6th. In the women's race, Annette Grabmuller would lead Amanda Presgraves, Samantha Kingsford and Susie Snyder out of the water. Onto the bike, Kingsford and Snyder would work their way to the front and together the whole way into the bike transition, but behind them was the Scottish rocket, Leslie Patterson. Patterson was five minutes back after the swim, but put a huge effort on the bike to enter T2 just two minutes behind, and would use her experience and resilience to overcome the thin air in technical terrain, and would take the lead on the run with just one mile to go, securing the win in two hours, 44 minutes and 50 seconds. 
Samantha Kingswood would play second, just 30 seconds back, with Susie Snyder in third in 2 hours, 48 minutes and 21 seconds. With a third place finish, Snyder would jump back into the top 5 of the Xterra World Cup, and Samantha Kingsford would enter the top 10 into 8th spot. The stage was set as Molvino would host the final two races of the Xterra World Cup, a Thursday short track followed by a Saturday Xterra World Championship. The short track course would feature a 400 meter swim, an 8 km bike and a 3 km trail run, ending with a fully ledged sprint to the finish line with its fair share of surprises and dramatic twists. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the XTERRA World Championship 2023. Short track, are you ready? Let's go! In the women's race, Emma de Kurt was first out of the water yet again in 5 minutes and 25 seconds, with Maeve Kennedy trailing, followed by the local hero Sandra Meyerhofer, who would finish the swim around 30 seconds back. During the bike segment, the weather conditions improved to deliver the first glimpse of sunshine of the weekend. The weather conditions allowing Sol Len Bill One to put the hammer down on the bike. She would take a 34 second lead over Didi Didricks, who was off the bike in second place, with Loan Dubasson finishing the bike in third position. Didricks would keep the gap to under 45 seconds to Bill Wan, but would be unable to challenge the French woman to eventually finish in second place. Loan Dubasson was solid in third after a fast bike and run combination, with World Cup leader Elise Patiers finishing fourth and Marta Mendito in fifth. In the men's race, Jens Roth and Kellen Norland would emerge from the water first, completing the swim in under five minutes. They were closely followed by Jules Dumas and Arthur Serriers. During the bike, Theo Dupois and Serriers would initially lead the pack, but by the second lap, Ruben Rizafa would take the lead. By the fourth lap, Sullivan Midar and Jens Emil Sloth Nielsen would also join him. So it would turn into a running race, with Sloth Nielsen, Arthur Serriers and Sullivan Midar all heading onto the run with a chance of winning. The top three positions were done, it would be a case of who would take the tape. Midar was the first to get dropped, and Sloth Nielsen and Serriers would go head to head as they headed towards the finish line. However, both would make a costly mistake on the very last turn, but Sloth Nielsen would recover the quickest to finally win his very first short track. That was a hard, tough battle. I've, me and uh, Arto have been in this situation quite, quite a bit of times now, and uh, finally I, I uh, took the longest draw and, uh, and got the win, so I'm, I'm thrilled, I'm really thrilled. A disappointed Serriers would finish in second, with Sullivan Midar rounding out the top three in third. Come on, with the skies clearing over the cool crystal waters of Lake Malvino, over 100 elite off-road athletes would dive headfirst into the 27th edition of the Xterra World Championship. All athletes dreams to win the world championship and I hope I can one day uh, win the world championships and uh, if it can be this year I, I will be so happy. I really want to have a nice race here and prove to everyone I still a bit the boss and I still at the level. So I prove it on the, uh, my last two races and I'm really looking forward to be here. The World Championship course would cover a 1.5 km lake swim, followed by a 32 km mountain bike with 1,000 meters of elevation, before being capped off with an intense 10 km foot race through mixed muddy trails and slick slopes to the finish. In 
the men's elite division. Michele Bonaccina spearheaded a lead group of five, exiting the 18 degree water in a time of 20 minutes and 9 seconds, practically side by side with Jens Roth, and barely seconds ahead of Sam Osborne, Jules Dumas and Kellen Orland. However, by the peak of the first climb, Felix Rissier and Arthur Serriers had surged to the front of the race and finished the first bike loop at the front of the pack, with just seconds separating them. The French duo would continue to dominate on the bike, navigating the slick trails following the previous day's rain and would head into the run with Verissier 9 seconds ahead of Serriers but nearly a 30 second lead over Ruben Ruzaffa. Michele Bonaccino would put in one of his best performances of the year in front of the home crowd and was exceptionally consistent on the bike to start the run in 4th place, just 9 seconds ahead of Jens and Milstroff Nielsen who continued to do justice to his unofficial nickname of the Overtaker as he would steamroll through the middle of the pack to start the final section of the race in 5th place. Parisier would keep the lead on the early part of the run and actually increase his gap to nearly 13 seconds after the first 5km lap. However, he may have misjudged his efforts as Serriers would flip that into a 22 second lead by the end of the second lap and would ultimately secure the victory and cross the finish line as world champion with a time of 2 hours 38 minutes and 53 seconds. An elated Felix Frissier would finish second, and a week to remember for Jens and Mil Sloth Nielsen, who would round out the podium in third. Ruben Rizafa would finish in fourth, with American Sullivan Midar having a storming run through the field to finish in fifth place, his first time inside the top ten at the Xterra World Championship. Felix was so strong, and I'm so happy to take the win here, defend my title, and in front of my mother who had a cancer last year, and it was less emotional, but for me it's gone uh, at least the uh, same than last year. In the women's race, Samantha Kingsford was first out of the water in a time of 22 minutes and 27 seconds. She was followed closely by Maeve Kennedy and Amanda Presgroves as the three athletes led the chase pack by 7 seconds. That chase pack contained both French favourites, Elise Patiers and Solène Bilouan, who exited the water in 8th and 10th place respectively, and were able to overtake early leader Maeve Kennedy by the first bike split. Solène Bilouan would dominate the first climb and put 25 seconds into her fellow countrymate by the end of the first lap. Entering the second transition, Bilouan had extended her lead to 1 minute and 27 seconds, with Elise Patiers coming into transition in second place ahead of local hero Sandra Meyerhofer, who had ridden through the field to hit the run in third position. An elected Bill One went on to extend her lead even further and would finish the race in a time of 3 hours, 6 minutes and 12 seconds, almost 2 minutes ahead of Elise Patiers in second place. Patiers may have missed out on the Xterra World Championship title, but her performance was still enough to secure the overall win in the first ever Xterra World Cup. In third place was Didi Didrix with a time of 3 hours, 10 minutes and 49 seconds, securing her second consecutive podium finish this week. The 2023 Xterra World Championship also served as the 12th and final race of the Xterra World Cup. The condensed circuit of five short tracks and seven full distance races was designed to showcase Xterra racing at the highest level and ultimately crown the most consistent off-road races on the planet. A win for Arthur Serriers sees the Frenchman become the first ever double champion in Xterra history, as the Frenchman now holds both the Xterra World Championship title and the Xterra World Cup title. Felix Frissier ends the series in second place, with Jens Milsloth Nielsen finishing in third. Elise Patiers, who led the series from start to finish, ends her season as the World Cup champion, with Solène Bilouan finishing in second and Luan Duvasson finishing in third. 
During the bike, I just thinking about the, the walker leader. I say, yeah, just be focused on your pace. Don't worry, you, you were consistent all the year, so just enjoy and, uh, and finish your race like you can. Just so happy, so happy about, uh, yeah. And, and my family and friends are here, and so it's amazing to, to, win, to win in front of them. So that brings us to the end of the Xterra World Cup for 2023, with 2024 looking brighter than ever with additional athletes all fighting for that big prize. We cannot wait.